Hello, Coco. This is one of my dogs, Coco. Do you want to turn around for the camera? She's a little diva. My dogs are with me in the studio all the time. Uh, yeah, I, they are an inspiration and a joy to me. And uh, I'm single and I live alone, except for my two dogs. So we're a family of three. And uh, I'm with them 24 seven since I basically uh, don't work outside the home any longer. I'm basically retired. Um, so where was I? Well, I guess probably first off is this welcome to my home because it's, for me, it's a creative expression of who I am and maybe some, my experiences in life. My name is Ty and I'm a visual artist and my medium is uh, painting. Uh, most of my work is abstract uh, and I draw a lot of inspiration uh, from nature, looking at colors, textures, shapes, lights and darks. And those are the things that really have uh, typically inspire me uh, in the work that I do. You know, I found out that, figured out I have a love affair with trees. And I became, I started looking at trees and I don't like, not necessarily with the leaves on them. It's when the leaves are off of them because it's then you can see the, uh, uh, the negative space, the space between the lines. And it's actually negative space that defines most everything that we look at in life because whatever it happens to be, if you don't have the negative space, it doesn't give it shape or form. And so I find in nature uh, so much inspiration there. In fact, I've read something somewhere that when you get, oh, it was a workshop that I took. And I remember the instructor saying that whenever you get stuck in your work, go back to nature because in nature, there is perfect harmony in all things and it will help you in your artwork. I have a painting, you don't see it from here, but on the wall over here, it's the fifth painting that I ever created. Uh, I came to art a little bit later in life and it's based around trees as well. When I think about projects, uh, about five years ago, I applied uh, for a grant that was open to artists who were above the age of 50. So I wrote up for the project was to uh, invite kids from the neighborhood where I had my studio, invite them into the studio and to uh, help give them art instruction from a very basic um, introduction. Because in schools, at least in California, there are not much in the way of art. They would get something like maybe once a quarter, three or four times a year, someone would come in. I started off Wednesdays and Friday afternoons in my studio from the time kids got out of school. I think we started at 2.30 and we went till about five o'clock. And uh, what was amazing to me is these kids have been in school all day. So within a half hour of ending school, they ended up in my studio for another two and a half hours. So we spent time learning about art and artists and how to look at things, how to draw how to paint, how to bring out creative expression in them. And uh, so I did this for two years uh, on two different grants that I secured. And I think there was probably about 18 kids who came through the program, but there were, uh, I think, 11 kids who came twice a week for two years. And I helped them, I hope, view themselves as artists. We had a couple um, exhibitions of their work where we invited family and friends of theirs and associates of mine to come in. And in my studio, I took basically all my work down and hung their work on the walls. And to see these kids come in and to see their work, I also encouraged them if they wanted to sell their work, they could put some price on it. But anyway, it was a very fun project. And it felt to me like uh, connecting with these kids, having fun with them, and uh, giving back to them and then the things they taught me. This piece behind me actually was created uh, during a workshop that I uh, held for people who are in recovery. And uh, it was made from leftover paint because as an artist, you're cheap. You don't want to have to buy and throw away a lot of paint. And so we finished a workshop and when the workshop ended, there was pallets or plates full of leftover paint. And I put on some music and I grabbed this canvas and I began to really kind of move and dance. There's a lots of movement in this piece and the way it's created. And uh, this is really what, what came out of what I was feeling that day, a sense of um, joy 
and uh, because I felt like I'm helping these people who were in a recovery program and was helping them make some progress, you know, in their own lives. So I felt a sense of joy in all the work that I was doing with them. I'm very proud of that as well. The process for creating, I think, is um, you go through spells. There's a great book that I read. It's called Art and Fear. I read this several years ago. It's a little maybe, I don't know, 80-page book. And in the book, the artist talks, uh, the author talks about if you ever, you should never stop creating. Because if you stop creating, you will never start again. So there have been times in my artist life as an artist that I put things on pause. So basically, uh, let's just say most recently was my move here from California a couple years ago. So for a good period of time, my art supplies were packed away. Uh, I moved into my home. I'm getting my home set up and um, that type of thing. I have a, a small studio here, a space designated in my home. So for me, it's uh, finding something that's inspiring me or something that is calling me to the studio or something that, uh, you know, I'm not making a living as an artist, I would guess. I'm creating because I choose to. The creative process begins with usually determining what what's um, the style I'm working in at the time. Uh, like I said, it tends to be abstract, uh, sometimes somewhat impressionistic. Uh, my favorites, of course, are the French Impressionist. And um, so I draw from that sometimes as well. Often, uh, I will um, I will burn either incense or smudge the studio. Uh, smudging, of course, is a Native American uh, tradition, which I don't know that much about. But in the smudging, that I find it changes the energy in the room, usually. If I'm either for myself or the experience of what's going on, so often I will uh, burn either some incense or sage or um, there's another incense wood that I burn uh, to help create this experience. And uh, sometimes too, sitting down is taking a few moments to try and clear my head and to get everything else out of my head. And that might be in just planting my feet solid and breathing in. Uh, and maybe it's saying, you know, uh, something about creation or giving the opportunity to create or inspire me on releasing things and letting my mind be redirected. You know, I guess maybe looking at how I came to art, I said I maybe the next direction perhaps in our questions are, that we want to go. <laughs> I think it's on the list somewhere. So 20 years ago, I had a major crisis in my life and uh, the trajectory of my life changed dramatically at that point. My background up to that point is having worked in church and ministry for nearly 25 years uh, as a pastor. And uh, through that time, of course, as a minister, I did a lot of work, of course, basically around speaking and writing. And that was a form of expression for me. But there was something inside of me that really needed to get out that I couldn't find the opportunity to express in either spoken or written word. And I felt like it was something visually. Now I'd taken some art classes in high school and maybe one or so in college, but had done nothing really since then. So I went out and I bought some just inexpensive canvas and paints and uh, you know some brushes and began to try and express myself on canvas. And I didn't know what the heck I was doing. And it really frankly looked like crap. And so I, I put it away for a couple of years, but still there was a, something inside of me is how do I express myself uh, in this extra or uh, other way? Uh, something that's beyond what I could see or touch. As an abstract artist, I'm not typically sitting down to paint a portrait of someone or to paint a pastoral scene or a still life. Uh, so for me, part of the mystery is what comes out in the process that when I'm working to create. 
there is a painting in the bathroom. It's a long, narrow one, and it looks like, to me, it's blue. Would you bring that? Do you see it? Uh, the one that looks like it was like an ocean? Or yes, like that one. Please, just lift it off the wall and bring it here. I'd like to use that perhaps as some example in, okay, this, yeah. in this next little, little piece of conversation. This is one of my favorite pieces uh, that I created in this project or in this series. So what the mystery in this is, when you begin to put the paint down, there's a point at which you have to walk away and you have to let go. And I think as an artist, for many of us, control is a very, we think about control. How do we control the medium? How do we create control, the brush or the whatever, the palette knife, whatever we happen to be using at the time? Part of the mystery is then just learning to release and to walk away. So from a spiritual perspective, this resonates very clearly with me. In um, my own spiritual journey, uh, there is a lot of mystery, or there's a lot of the unknown. I think for the better part of my life, uh, growing up in a very, uh, the certain culture that I grew up in, a very religious and family we went to church you know sunday morning and sunday nights and wednesday nights and until you're basically exhausted from church but nonetheless that's what we did uh but the one thing about that part of my life is we felt like we had all the answers and so for my 20 almost 25 years as a minister you work to have all the answers you're working with people and people come to you or they look to you for some uh, enlightenment, support, some guidance, whatever in their lives. And you need to have all the answers. In my uh, spiritual crisis, uh, what happened for me was really beginning to understand and embrace God in a very new and different way that I never had before. And to experience grace like I had never experienced before in my life. I don't think I knew what grace was before I went through a, a crisis in my life. And in that process of that crisis, I lost basically everything up to that point. But what I really found was me. I found myself. And I began to explore with God and begin to learn for that. For me, it's okay to answer sometimes I don't know. Because to me, how can we know all things? I don't think we can know all things. But for me, there is a, this, this mystery in life of how things um, evolve and how things unfold. And for me, in learning that is uh, learning maybe to breathe and learning to relax and to learn uh, that in my own spiritual journey, that um, I don't need to have all the answers and that the unknowing is not necessarily a crisis of faith. It's just maybe an opportunity to learn or an opportunity to say, I don't know, but that's okay because it doesn't affect my connection with God, my view on life, my spirituality. So that abstract piece for me is maybe understanding that while God is abstract in many ways, that I can see God in many ways as well. The connection, I think, with God and my art, again, I keep coming back to the word of nature because to me, nature is just, it's magnificent. I try to see God in, I don't know if I could say all things, maybe I should just say most things, uh, and to relax in that. Uh, my daily, almost daily experience is to get up in the mornings and uh, to let the girls, the dogs out and to sit on my back deck, which has just this lovely view across my yard and across some neighbors' backyards uh, without the obstruction of fences. And there I, I get to observe and that's there that I have my coffee and I usually will meditate and think and pray. Uh, 
I don't say that um, as a form of, oh, wow, he meditates and prays every morning. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I do most mornings, but it's, for me, it's a spiritual practice that, that seems to help and encourage me to grow. I don't do it because somebody told me I needed to do it. I do it because this is a, one of the ways that I experience the, the closeness and the presence of God. And uh, sometimes I will play music, but many times it's just breathing and clearing my mind or meditating or getting into a position of my feet firmly planted and my palms out and breathing to take in, uh, you know, the, the feeling the, the fullness of God or feeling the spirit of God within me. And, uh, and I often pray with my hands like this because something I learned in my spiritual crisis is letting go. Maybe that's part of the mystery or part of the unknown, is not trying to hold on to things or to control things, but the process of just letting go. I, I began to pray like this uh, 20 years ago after the spiritual crisis. Some people would pray with their palms up, perhaps like this. And to me, that is still was holding on. And some might pray with their hands downward like this, which would also be perhaps holding on. But for months, I prayed like this because this was letting go. And in the letting go of uh, clearing stuff out of my life was opening up space for God to come in and to act and to find uh, to me that wonder and experience of God that I had never really truly known before even 25 years of professional work as a minister. Um, it was a very defining time for me and it was out of that that led me to art, a place to express myself uh, that I didn't know how to express otherwise. In art, especially in abstract art, I find, is that it allows you to delve into it and to see how it speaks to you. So it's about perspective, it's about the connection. Now, I don't assume that everyone who sees my work is going to see something in it or, I, they don't, frankly, I don't need for them to have an appreciation for it. Yeah, I'd like people to buy it, right? But um, I don't need them to see what I see in the piece. I need them uh, to have their own experience so for me, how is that about God is that your experience with God and faith uh, is very different likely from mine. We may be on some similar as parallel paths, but we each have our own journey and our own mindset in this. And so for me, that's about how do I express the broader expression of love and acceptance, that your journey is valid, what you see in a piece of art especially an abstract piece of what it may speak to you, what it may bring out of you is valid because that's your experience with it. When I talk about perspective, uh, what I've learned over time in my own artwork is, you know, in nature, the closer you get to something, it becomes abstract. So I, I experienced this. I went out to my garden while you were getting set up and I picked some leaves off my coleus. It's the end of the season and they're just about shot. Uh, but there was a few, few pieces that I, I grew these because they're, my grandmother had coleus. Can you hold them up? Please? Yeah, my grandmother grew coleus by, uh, in the flower bed outside the, the back of her house she, where she and my grandfather lived. And so this year was my first experience in growing coleus. And, uh, but what I see in the coleus leaf is, let's just take one of these off. Well, you saw me take it off the original plant. So if you know much about plants or you might know that's a coleus plant, right? And this is the leaf of a coleus. But if you change this, and let's just say we had a little viewfinder. 
I can't really do it exactly. But if you come down to it and you just take a little interest, little piece of this and you look into it, it stops becoming a leaf. You see the lines and you see the texture and you see the colors and it becomes a piece of abstract. Then what I begin to learn is the further we get away from something, it becomes abstract. Now, I can't really display that here, but if we were to maybe get it in a spaceship or something, I guess they're shooting off another rocket today with some people in it, right? And they're going to look at the Earth. The further they move away from Earth, the more it becomes a piece of abstract. So to me, again, it's about perspective, how we choose to look at things in life, how we're influenced by the lives that we have lived to this point, uh, and how all of that comes together. Uh, what does that have to do with faith? Well, for me, it has a lot to do with faith because in my own crisis of life, I came back to uh, connect with God in a very different and real way that I never had before. And to own that experience in my life and to recognize that this is mine and that whether a person agrees with it or not, that it is my experience uh, and journey with God, that's part of the mystery. That uh, how my journey has evolved, how your journey, how anyone else's journey has evolved. Uh, the mystery of how this plant could grow to look like this and another one could look like this and another one could look like this. But it's the mystery of uh, just recognizing the beauty in it and letting go and honoring that that's the mystery of life. Maybe, I don't know if it has anything to do with what we're saying, but I'm going to throw it in anyway. Yeah. So... Uh, the chair I'm sitting in today is my grandmother's chair. And it was important for me to sit in this chair today. Uh, my grandparents' house, they had a small little living room. And if grandmother's chair sat here, my grandfather's chair would have been there. And there would have been Lawrence Welk on Saturday nights on a black and white TV over here. And above grandmother's chair was a cuckoo clock. They had a cell, a farm cell, and they moved into town. And in the cell, uh, my grandmother's chair was sold. I lived uh, in California at the time, didn't make it back. Now, I don't know why I had an affection for this chair. Maybe because it's a Morris chair. I probably can't show you as well, but a Morris chair basically is a chair that can recline by moving this bar across the back. And maybe as a kid, I thought, this is pretty cool, right? But anyway, the chair sold that was in my aunt's possession, and at least it was still in the family. M many years passed, maybe about 12 years ago now, I was back here visiting my parents, and my mom said, you know that, gra you know grandma's chair? Yes, well, your aunt Dolores moved and she didn't have room for it, and she knew you had an interest in it, and she wanted you to have it. I'm like, oh my gosh, are you serious? So where's the chair? It's in the garage. I ran to the garage and there it sit in disrepair. The hinge on the back was broken. The spindles on the side, more of them were missing. The cushions had been, who knows, in a garage and they smelled. But I could still see the, the value and the beauty in this piece of furniture that was laying there broken in pieces. So I took it to a furniture restoration place uh, here in Joplin and the man said well let's take a quick look and he took us some sandpaper this was painted black all I ever knew was painted black so he said we can strip it down there's beautiful oak underneath and we can create some spindles along the side that will match the ones that are there and we can fix the hinge and uh, the metal bar across the back is uh, iron we can get all the black off of it great and so the chair came and in this great big box with all of these star foam worms all in it. And I got the chair out and I set it down and I grabbed a pillow 
because the cushions were long gone. And I put a pillow in the back and one in the seat. And Jared, I sit down on this chair and I put one arm here and one arm here. And my grandmother stood on one side. And my grandfather on the other. And I could feel them wrap their arms around me. Now, what was that? I didn't see them, okay? I didn't actually feel the touch of them, but their presence was very, very strong. I had never experienced anything like that before. Can I explain it? Absolutely not. Other than I believe when someone we love passes, we carry them with us here in our heart and in our mind, but more importantly in our heart. So was that, some people would say, well, that's not, that's not possible. Well, I, I don't care if they think it's possible or not. It was my experience, it was valid. To me, what happened, I don't know, it's part of the mystery. Yet to this day, if I need to ground myself, if I feel like I'm off kelter, out of spinning out of control, I can come and I can sit in this chair. And here I become more grounded and I can come back to myself. So I don't know why I wanted to add that in. It's just, it's a part of a mystery of life that I don't know why and how that happened, but it does for me. And uh, I'm grateful for this time. And I hope maybe this conversation maybe helps somebody else in their own journey and mystery. Thanks, Tom. Thank you.